Hey YouTube, welcome back. How's everyone's week going? I am still dealing with a lot of heavy emotions, but each day is a little bit better. So I have talked about implementing healthier coping mechanisms and in my last video, I created a daily routine to see how that would affect my anxiety, stress, and overall mental health. However, over the last few months, I have already made a few changes to improve my mental health and I thought I'd hop on and share those changes with you. So number one, the first thing I did was start using aromatherapy. There are a lot of oils which are touted to help relieve stress and anxiety and I would like to try more, but for now I'm just using lavender oil. I'll use it in an oil burner about an hour before bed and use it overnight in my humidifier and I'll inhale a few drops as needed if I'm feeling a bit anxious. Does it actually do anything? I'm not sure. Maybe it helps me to sleep better, which can in turn lower stress and anxiety, and I don't notice any ill effects, so it's something I'm going to continue with. Number two, in the same vein as a daily routine, I have started using my day planner. I had it in retirement for a couple of years when most of us were confined to our homes, since not much was going on to plan at the time, but I recently started using it again. Now, I know a lot of people use their phones and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, but I like it old school and the act of writing things down helps me to remember them. Whereas if I just enter an appointment on my phone, I forget it two seconds later. Plus I have in the past inadvertently erased appointments or reminders from my phone. So having a physical planner ensures that that doesn't happen. Um, this is the planner that I have and I get the inserts at Staples every year, which I will link to in this, the description. And it helps me to keep track of appointments, plans. There's a little to do section and I keep a blank piece of note paper at the beginning of every month to remind me of the things that I need to do throughout the month that don't really fit into an actual schedule. Like at some point next month, I need to get my oil changed. Uh, number three, similarly, I am back to using my daily to do list. Uh, I just used a cheap notebook that I bought at the dollar store. So nothing fancy here. But just like my planner, I like a physical to-do list. I kind of stopped using it when I stopped working though. I used it when I was primarily working because after working eight hours a day, my brain was just so fried that there was no way I remember what needed to be done that evening. It was just way too easy to come home and pass out on the couch. So I'd forget to go to the bank or forget what I needed to run to the grocery store for. I'd even write down daily tasks like clean the cat's litter box just so I had a visual reminder to do it. But when I stopped working, I thought I would have so much time for everything that I wouldn't need to continue to use it. But since then, I have found myself forgetting to do pretty much everything I needed to do and felt pretty scatterbrained. So I went back to using it to keep a list of daily to-dos. Um, I think both the planner and the to-do list are helpful because it eliminates the mental chaos and clutter. It stops me from worrying about the things I have control over. It's written down in either my planner or my to-do list so it can get out of my head and I can stop worrying about it instead, leave that room and mental energy to deal with things that I can't control or the things that I think I need to worry about because my anxiety has created yet another unlikely scenario for me to dwell on. Number four, speaking of clutter, I have been on a mad mission to declutter my house. If it doesn't have a purpose, if it is just collecting dust, it goes. And if I have to find a place for it, I don't bring it into my house. It's just when you're surrounded by a lot of clutter, it's just more things to clean. It's more things to put away, which means more that I have to do. It's more things that I have to see, which adds to the mental clutter because I just feel that item, whatever it is, is mocking me and my anxiety. So eliminating the physical clutter, number one, means I have less things that I have to clean and put away, which means less things I have to do. And number two is one last thing that I have to think about so I can spend my mental energy elsewhere. And there is a science behind this. I'm not gonna get into it. Just Google clutter and anxiety if you wanna learn more. Number five, I have started a pretty rigid gym routine. Um, I'll do a further video on this specifically, but I've always been into physical fitness and used to work out at home pretty regularly, but only recently shelled out for a gym membership. And since I do pay for it, I fully intend to get my money's worth by actually going. Typically I go two days, then take a day off and I try to stick to that schedule. 
Um, I'm not one of those people who feels that exercise helps me when I'm in the throes of anxiety, but I do think that it can help to stabilize my mood long term. Um, although even if it turns out to have little to no effect on my mental health, it still has a lot of other health benefits, so I think I'll stick with this one. So those are the steps that I have already taken to control my anxiety and mental health. Um, they're not cures by any means and are only small steps, but any step, no matter how small, is a step closer to having control over or being able to effectively manage my mental health. Um, I should have an update in a few days on how my daily routine is going, so if you are curious about that, make sure that you subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and a share and uh, leave a comment down below to say hello, share your own experiences, ask me any questions or offer suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!